Today I want to show you my method of writing scripts that I've been using for the past 5 or 6 years. I'm not saying that it's the best approach or that it will help everyone. If you got a different system that suits you, by all means. But if you got nothing and you are struggling every time to write any piece of code, maybe you'll find this info useful. As an example, I will be using a relatively simple task. The player must go and locate a VIP, rescue them and escort them to safety, which is represented by a helicopter. Once the VIP gets inside the helicopter, they get transported away and the task is complete. The first thing I do is plan as much as possible. Planning usually takes less time and effort and I can identify potential problems ahead of time. So let's start with that. Ok, so I imagine how the task could go in the ideal case. The player starts somewhere and is informed about having to rescue a VIP. This can be done through dialogue, radio, task interface, doesn't matter. The player then goes to the VIP's location. They can face enemies on the way there, again it doesn't matter. The player then reaches the VIP. The player then takes the VIP to another location, again. They might encounter enemies and it doesn't really matter right now. Finally, the player reaches the designated area, finds the helicopter that is waiting for the VIP, the VIP gets inside the helicopter, it flies away, task is complete. Now you might think, well, that this isn't exactly helpful. I said that half the things don't matter and then just repeated what escorting a VIP is. So let's break it down. When I say that something doesn't matter, it's because from the perspective of the mission flow or the sequence of important events, such details are inconsequential. When I'm thinking about making a mission where I rescue a VIP, it really isn't important if I decide to have the player face 5 or 6 enemies, or 20, or none. The mission will progress in the exact same way every time. So things like where exactly the VIP is, how many enemies there are, or whether the VIP ends up getting into a truck or a helicopter at the end, these things don't change how the mission will be structured. And I can always change them later. Once I have the basic flow finished, once I have a framework that lets me play through the whole sequence, I can then adjust the specific details and I will know that the mission still works just fine or at most I only have to do very slight adjustments. Going over every single action in a mission also helps me identify all the points at which I will have to call some code. I can prepare a very clear layout for my scripts ahead of time and make a whole sequence of events that will control the flow of my mission. I can already tell that there are two important moments that divide my mission into three parts. I have the initial setup, where I must spawn everyone in, give the player the task of rescuing the VIP and so on, all the way until the player reaches the VIP. Once that happens, I have my first important moment of the mission. Reaching the VIP means having to tell the player to head to the safe zone with the VIP. Maybe spawning some enemies, I have to start checking if the VIP is still with the player and so on. At this moment a second part of the mission starts and lasts all the way until the VIP gets inside a helicopter, which is my second important point, where I need to finish the task, get the helicopter out of the current area, make sure the VIP doesn't blow up on their way to safety and if I want to, close the mission as a whole. This is the last portion of my mission. When writing scripts, I can use this information to determine when I need to use certain commands and how long they should be active for. Of course this doesn't always work, but at least I can already tell the overall flow for the code I will write. At this point, if I'm not very experienced, I can just start writing code and see how far I get. May as well, right, because there's not much else I can do at this point. I just need to write code and solve individual issues along the way. But if I do have some sort of experience and generally know what commands there are, I can keep planning. Let's see how that would look. I already divided my task into several groups. Now let's split each one into individual commands. I'm not going to go through all of them, just to give you an idea. At the very start I know that I will need to spawn things in. If I'm doing just a small mission I can place things in the editor and do it that way. If it's a longer scenario where these individual tasks appear throughout, 
I will have to use code to spawn the VIP, the enemies. I could also spawn the helicopter already, don't have to do it, but it's an option. I will also need to create a task for the player to go and rescue the VIP. This includes creating the task itself, sending them a notification on the screen, maybe creating a waypoint, maybe making some sort of dialogue to let them know. Lastly, I can already give the VIP some sort of animation to have them lay on the ground or be tied to a chair or kneel down, whatever you have available. And the VIP will just keep doing that until they get rescued by the player. Lastly, I can use add action on the VIP to allow the player to interact with them and simulate the action of rescuing them. This way I can set the entire initial phase of the mission right here at the beginning and not worry about it all the way until the first important moment happens. The player can walk 1, 5 or 50 kilometers to reach the VIP and the code will work perfectly fine. They can take 1 minute or 2 hours to reach the VIP, nothing changes. They can face 2 enemies or 200, the mission still works. This way I can fine tune the little details that are more about atmosphere, difficulty and this sort of professionalism while still having a stable working framework for the basic functionality of the mission. Next thing I know, once the player interacts with the VIP, I need to update the tasks. Maybe play some animations, some dialogue. Maybe I will spawn more enemies or redirect the existing ones to head in a new direction. I can spawn the rescue helicopter if it hasn't spawned already. Perhaps I can set a time limit, like the player calls the heli, but since enemies are closing in on their position, the heli only has X minutes before it takes off. This way you can add some more spice to the mission. Best thing about this, I can make all of this happen once the player interacts with the VIP. And since I already planned how that would happen using add action, I have naturally split my code into two scripts. The first part runs at the very start, does the initial job required and prepares things for phase 2. The second script picks up once phase 2 starts, once again does some immediate stuff and it can prepare stuff for later. Looking closer at taking the VIP to the safe zone, I can either have the VIP follow the player, have the VIP walk by themselves to the safe zone or I can add them to the player's group. I prefer the last option, especially if the player can be the group leader. Because by giving the player control over the VIP's position and actions, the player keeps the freedom and can continue to play the mission however they want, but they also get the responsibility and have to ensure the VIP survives the trip. The kind of mission that gives you a clear task but doesn't control how exactly you do that task accomplishes the best of two worlds. You are given a clear objective and have some direction, so you aren't completely lost because the game doesn't tell you what to do. At the same time, you are given the freedom to complete your task in any way you want and aren't restricted by some arbitrary rules, so you can be fast, slow, go left, right, any strategy you come up with, as long as you succeed with it, the game will reward you for it. Giving the player access to command the VIP around makes sure that the player has some agency in the mission. They can have the VIP hide in a bush somewhere and wait until the area is clear, or have them board a vehicle. Hey, they can even grab a gun and join the fight. Now that we have freed the VIP and are taking them to the safe zone, we can do any number of things. I have decided to finish the first task, make a new one and start a 30 minute timer for the player. Just to have some sort of upper limit, to make sure players don't completely cheese the mission by crawling all the way there or waiting until night time. Your window for extraction is limited, so there you go, you have a limit there. This leads me to another way to look at scripting. At this situation we don't need any code to check the player's actions. The player can do whatever they want, they have 30 minutes to get the VIP into a transport vehicle and the way they do it is up to them. So naturally we can have an event handler for the helicopter that detects when the VIP gets inside the vehicle. 
Once that happens, the pair finishes the mission. Now let's see what other situation can happen. We have given the player absolute freedom. The player can now run around and have fun and we need to make sure this playground we have set up for them will not break. Let's think about it. Maybe the player runs into enemy group and the enemies shoot the VIP. Could happen. Or maybe someone throws a grenade in lands nearby, the VIP dies that way. Maybe the player turns around and shoots the VIP right away. That could happen. No matter what, it's clear that once the VIP dies, the player won't be able to complete the mission. We need to make sure the mission reacts to this situation. The easiest way to handle this is giving the VIP an event handler. If they die, the mission is marked as failed. Now let's think about the timer. Once 30 minutes are up, the player should no longer be able to finish the mission. We can do that by having the helicopter leave, but once again, we also need to make sure the mission properly fails. The task notification pops up, all that stuff. If the heli just leaves but you don't inform the player, they will be unable to finish the scenario properly. So we are in a situation where we have three possible events and only one of them can happen in a mission. The VIP reaches the transport safely. Or the player takes too much time. Or the VIP dies. Now think about the following situation. You take exactly 29 minutes and 59 seconds to reach the place. The VIP boards the helicopter, task complete. And one second later, another notification pops up, task failed. This can very well happen if we don't make sure to put conditions in place so that only one ending can happen in a mission. This can once again be done in many ways. You can have variables that track mission progression and before anything happens you ask for the state of those variables and only run code if these variables are in their right states. Or you ask directly. But that can become tedious if you later change these fail situations and you have to change all conditions in all scripts, but still doable if you manage it well. I have chosen another possibility. I ask for the task state. This way I can have several different scripts, each one for a different situation, or let's say ending, one script for each ending. The first script runs. It checks if the task is still open. It is. The script finishes the task, either positively or negatively, displays some message to the player, done. Later, if any of the other endings are triggered, nothing happens, because the task has already been closed, so the other scripts run, check the condition, the task has already been closed, so just do nothing. So in a situation where the player runs out of time, then turns around and shoots the VIP out of anger, Running out of time triggers the task to close, and the player shooting the VIP then triggers a different script, which will do nothing because the task has already failed. Similarly, reaching the helicopter also does nothing in this situation. Last point I want to make, it doesn't matter if you split this into two scripts or five or twenty. You can have all of this logic in one script, and if you can tell what goes where, good for you, keep it that way. Or you can have a separate script for each small piece of code that is self-contained and if you need to add something new, you will create a new script. The only thing that matters is that you understand how your code works, how one command affects another. My classification is only one possibility, but really there is no rule for this. You do whatever suits your needs the most. Sometimes splitting the code into several scripts allows you to reuse some code. For example, if running out of time and killing the VIP results in the task failing, I could use just one script to call in either of these situations. And any changes in the future like adding more effects or more dialogue will be easier because it's all in one script. I added that one and I'm done. And other times it's better to keep things in one larger script because otherwise you end up with 10 scripts calling each other back and forth and once you forget how the web of scripts interacts with itself it can be difficult to untangle the logic to understand it. In this specific scenario 
I can split the scripts in many ways. The most logical for me is to make one script for the initial setup, one script for when the player reaches the VIP and interacts with them, which also handles setting up conditions for later, one script for mission success and one script for mission failure. Of course, I could have twice as many scripts or I could have just one. Based on how comfortable you are with coding and what goal you are aiming for, you can write your code to be completely self-sufficient. What do I mean by that? That when you run the script, it does everything. See here, I have placed some objects in the editor, I gave them names and if you take the scripts as they are and don't do the other preparations in the editor, it will fail at some point. You are going to be mad at me and so on. But I can write the scripts in a way that they will spawn these things in. So I can just open up a completely blank map, put the scripts inside, press play and the mission will work just fine. This is admittedly a bit more work, but it's quite flexible and you can create a repeatable or random task this way. Just a little challenge that spawns itself into a larger mission. You do it, it ends, cleans after itself and you can continue with some other objective. Much easier to do if everything is handled by scripts that you just place in a folder and with one call you take care of the entire task. So that's pretty much all I wanted to discuss with you today. Not really any specific commands, because once you learn to think about putting code together, you can do so in any language you want. With SQF nearing the end of its lifetime, many of you will transition to infusion scripts and this sort of general understanding how to structure your code to fit your missions will surely be useful even there. All examples are in the video description. I have prepared several variations on the basic mission flow. VIP rescue triggered by action or just general proximity, VIP joins the player or goes on their own, event handler for the helicopter or for the VIP. One variation where everything is in one gigantic mess of a script, you just plop that into an empty map and it will create the whole thing for you when you call that script and one variation where I don't use global variables. I kinda cheat a little bit with set variable commands, but it's the best I could do. So have a look at that if you wish and I'll see you in the next one.